This is very exciting, Stugatz. Look at this man. His oh, face makes me happy. His jokes make me happy. His work <laughs> makes me happy. He has taken time out of his day. I know he was eating a sleeve of saltines in his underwear, watching Carlito's Way, and he has yes. stopped doing that so he can join us. Patton Oswalt is with us. He's been doing comedy for more than 35 years. His effervescent tour is about to hit Grand Rapids, Detroit, San Diego, Denver, Baltimore, Providence, San Francisco, and Salt Lake. You can get tickets for his tour. Patton Oswalt. Oswald.com. He's been doing it great for a very long time. Thank you, Pat. And I want to talk about your game show, but I'm a big fan of your work. And I'm talking about the documentary on Max, all of your work. I'm a big fan. What, Dan, thank you so much. I, that is b unbelievably flattering. You quoted a very obscure bit of mine, and I'm kind of taken aback. Thank you, man. Oh, I, I just, I love your facility with language. I love your take. I, I just love what it is that you have done with your comedy. So we'll talk about your game show in a in a second, but because we've got some guys here who want to pitch you uh, some of their game show ideas. I loved you and Ratatouille. Oh, oh I want to, oh, thank you. Thank yep. you so much. I want to. Hang on, I want to hear game show ideas. I'm, I'm instantly intrigued by that. Okay, uh, we will. They're terrible, but they're terrible nah, ideas. Dan, they're, oh, bad. they're not bad. They're not as good as One Percent Club, which we're also going to play with him. Did you like oh, Carlito's okay. Way, Dan? I loved Carlito's Way. Kleinfeld is perhaps Sean be uh, Sean Penn's best character that, ever. That can't be right. I think he, it is. Yeah, he's actually pretty amazing in that movie, and he's so not Sean Penn. He's this absolutely different person on screen. It's kind of stunning watching him. Yeah, yeah, he agrees. Um, I don't know if he agrees. <laughs> I, 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 do, I love Kleinfeld, too. My friend was Kleinfeld for Halloween. I like, I love that what? character, yes. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, That's whoa. Right. Your friend dressed as Kleinfeld? Yes. Yeah, well, what that a is... great costume. The costume thing goes way Did back. Did he spend him. the whole day just going... Well, there's this movie called Carlitos, Play. <laughs> and so there's a guy, you know, you know, Sean Penn from it. So he played that, that. That was his whole Halloween that year was explaining. His <laughs> That's right. It is. It's Who not, are you? It's not an it's not an efficient costume, but it was just basically the hair that went straight up, and it was Sean Penn with a cocaine problem. Uh, before we get into the meat of what it is that we're going to do here, just introducing you to some of the audience here. I heard uh, Patrice O'Neill say the other day he he was talking about the comics that Mark Marin has birthed and he called you a, a baby Marin and I didn't I didn't know whether to take it as an insult or flattery because I think of you as unique in in the regard uh, that you are and different from Mark Marin but the thing that I wanted to ask you was Mark Marin said in reaction to that because they were talking about how happy and refreshed he now looks uh, that he's happier now but he's also less funny because he's happy. And so I just wanted to ask you. Who are you, you talking about? Because Patrice O'Neill's uh, left us like since 2011. It's confusing. Right. To follow. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm Maybe sorry. It was a rerun. It was an old interview. I'm sorry. Nah. It, was not, it was not a recent interview. My so bad. looking less refreshed. Uh, well, yes. It couldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> but he was talking about uh, Mark Maron and the happiness of Mark Maron. And Mark Maron was saying that he's less funny because he's happy. And so I just wanted to ask you because you seem happier now if you find that it has anything to do happiness or unhappiness with how funny you can be i first off i don't buy into that cliche that oh well if, if you're if you're happy and well adjusted you can't be creative i i've never bought into that most that that's a myth that people are like out of my torment came this great art usually the great art comes once you're done dealing with your torment and can look at it from uh, a level of sanity uh, and and some happiness, you it can't come from pure torment. And as far as being a Mark Marin baby, I wear my influences on my sleeve. So Mark was a huge influence. My friend my friend Blaine Patch was a huge influence. Bill Hicks. I mean, I everyone is and Bill Hicks. I mean, Mark Marin is kind of a Bill Hicks baby. Like we all keep influencing influencing each other, and then it, an influence helps you, if anything figure out who you are even better. So I'm not one of those guys, again, that try, I don't believe in the whole myth of, I am absolutely unique and nothing influenced me. Well, that's clearly not true. Everyone is influenced by somebody and get over the anxiety of that. Get, get over yourself and, and just uh, enjoy your influences. Are you at your most confident right now? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm still... Uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent confident all the time, not just in myself, but just in reality, Say, reality seems to be, uh, fracturing a little bit and fraying. So I don't really know 
as confident as I am in myself, I don't know how confident I am in the world around me anymore. I, I t- you know, take that how, how you want to, but um, I still think that you can find creativity and joy in the darkness. You have to. That's the only way to. That's the that's the most vengeful thing you can do against darkness and sadness is to be happy and celebrate and be funny and be a friggin' goofball. That's interesting what you're saying though. You're talking about the world around you. I wasn't. I was talking about confidence in your comedy, not confidence in the world or confidence overall. Or although, although I guess all of those things jumble together when you're a comedian and you're pouring yourself into your content every day. Look, I think that the MC in cabaret was very confident in his performing and comedy abilities, uh, but he. I also think he was pretty aware of what was happening in the world around him. So yeah, I'm. I'm very confident in my comedy, mainly because I've been doing it 35 years, but it's going to be really interesting to see where comedy ends up holding a place in the world that's to come, if that makes sense. It does, and Billy and Chris's ideas for game shows make slightly less sense. I, I look well, forward... I, hang on, I didn't, by the way, I hope I'm not bumming everyone out. I don't, I'm not, I'm not some guy holding a sandwich board saying the, the end is near. I just think a big change is coming. It's going to be really interesting to see how it all shakes out. Actually, when I saw you in Los Angeles, though, it, it was in a show, I think, yeah, the next day, Marin performed, and both of you were saying the end is near. Both of, both of you were talking about the idea of how hard this, not how hard this is to do, but just the idea that, the, that it feels like we've got about nine years left in the world before it explodes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it does feel like, the, it feels like the, the first verse of that David Bowie song, Five Years, and then what are we going to do in the time that's left of us to us? Oh man, this is. I'm sorry. This is supposed to be a no. Button. What are we They're doing? Gonna, we're going to lighten it up oh, right no. now. This the is good, my fault. Game this shows, is my I fault. Mean, we're going to lighten it up right now. The good news is, is <laughs> if Mark Maron said in the Patrice O'Neill interview he was wrong. Yeah. Right. Thank oh, you. Okay. <laughs> Billy, what is your game show idea for Patton Oswalt? <laughs> okay, Patton, I have two options here for you. Two pitches for you, if you will, and they're kind of okay. different. But I don't know if it's what you'd like. So I have like different types of shows here. The first okay. one is called Patton Pending, okay? <laughs> so think of a show like Shark Tank, right? Uh-huh. And people come to you, and they right. have pitches, and they want to see if you're in on this, whether it be a product or whether it be a project. And if you like it, you give your patented Patton Pending approval to the product. So it's just Shark Tank. No, it's Patton Pending. Right. You listening? Yeah. His name is Patton. Yeah. Right. Pending. But hang on. Are, are they only pitching... Products can they also be pitching, uh, like a, a film idea? A Absolutely. Song? Yeah. It's, it's anything they want to bring, and then I say whether oh we should pursue that or is it's, it's not so much that I'm whether I'm investing well, no, in them. No, or not. no, no, no. It's no. me going, hey, keep doing this, or no, no. oh, dude, get off of this track right now. No, 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 no. Oh, no, you've overcomplicated this. You don't say okay, yes. So you don't. Sorry, say, you don't give them advice. <laughs> you give them your patented patent pending. <laughs> If but what's that mean? It. He's asking yes. what's that mean when he does well, that. Well, it's a patent pending. <laughs> yeah. So he approves you the project that. or you the product me- or right. song or what have does you. Does he have to invest, though, is what he's saying. Well, it's a patent pending. Pending. Yeah. yeah. It's pending. pending. It's his Got patented it. okay. patent pending right. because he does it a lot on right. the shows. Yes. Patent and patent pending. Yes. Okay. Uh, you okay. in on this? It or? needs a few more. It, it needs some more layers. If I'm we sorry. Okay. If we were on the show right now, would you give me your patented patent pending? Oh, God, no. Okay. Oh, it's, been, all right. it's been rejected. Well, I have another one. His body, his body language okay. was so good when he was hearing your pitch. Okay. Now, this one, this one, think of it more like American Idol or America's Got Talent for the theater, right? This one's called Patton Harvey Oswald. And what you do is you have a number of theater people, performances, plays that you want to happen in the future, and they come and they're pitching it to you. And yeah. then if you like it, you see out the rest of the play. But if you don't like it, you assassinate Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> oh, wow. Come on. Instead come of hitting on. like the, the X, you assassinate Abraham Lincoln. These mm-hmm. are terrible ideas. Patton Harvey Oswald. Well, no, it was John well, booth. It would be, look, that, that is beyond grim and sad. However, <laughs> you could make it fun if every week there's a different um, guest, a celebrity Lincoln that gets uh, fake assassinated. So... You know, this week. <laughs> so what we Who could, could do is be like, celebrities. But the that's theater, funny, like you bring celebrities in to play Lincoln. So it's like everyone who doesn't love 
uh, actor Don Cheadle. Yeah. Well, Don <laughs> Cheadle will be playing Lincoln, and and then that well, puts pressure on the people. Like, hey, you don't want to see Don Cheadle get assassinated, so let's really give it your best shot here. Well, hold on, I'm rethinking this, and I think you'd have to oh. be at a, at a book depository <laughs> instead of a theater. And then it wouldn't okay. be Lincoln; it would be Kennedy. <laughs> well, Don. Cheadle. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. You know that, but that you could get a I'll car sponsorship involved Lincoln. in it as well. You could get a car sponsorship right. to drive around the celebrities, and based on you, I guess this would be less about theater and more about parades. If you like, maybe we do this around Thanksgiving time, and they're auditioning for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and you think if it's a good act for the parade, then you kind of let the car dealership and the celebrity keep going. <laughs> and if not, then you know. Uh, should I make him you know stop talking, goes. Patton? You're, you're you're using a lot of colors in this painting. Is hmm. all I'm saying. I paint why, with a broad why brush. Just, why didn't you pitch that that Oswald has a bullet that can travel backwards in time and kill Lincoln, and then that that way we could, we could tie both assassinations together? Huh. I like that. You think he's using Patton, a Patton. lot of colors in this painting, Patton. and you just made Don Cheadle Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> well, listen, he's a great actor. I I, I can't imagine a role yeah. he could pull off. <laughs> Put it on the poll. Kleinfeld, Put it on the poll, Juju at Levitard Show. Do you think Don Cheadle can pull off the role of Abraham Lincoln? I, I absolutely think he can. Let's uh, let's. So was that a yes? Patent pending on that one, idea? On, on, uh, I'm sorry, but no. But okay. it was. Oh. Here's what I did. Listen, can I can I pitch a game show? I guess, but wait, wait. Yes, I need to tell everybody. He's the host oh. of the big new game show, The One Percent Club. It premieres next Thursday for Prime Video subscribers, then Mondays at 9 p.m. on Fox starting June 3rd, plus the next day on Prime. Is that what you wanted to pitch or something else? Well, I did want to pitch. Um, who was just pitching to me? What's his name again? I'm sorry. Billy. Billy. Roy. Billy, a <laughs> show where you pitched game shows would be weirdly entertaining. Okay. Um, I like so it. it, yes. be, it was, uh, here's what I want to call it. It's called Bus Stop with Billy. And we have different commuters, and then you come and sit next to them at the bus stop and start yammering like a crazy person. Crazy and person. And yeah. game shows to them, and we see how long they can last before they go, screw this, I'm calling an Uber and getting out of okay, here. Before how about they this? tap out. How about this? Where's Oswaldo? Oh, good God. Okay, we would show you a busy photo, like in Where's uh -huh. Waldo, except there's a little picture of you hidden inside of it. I like it. That you would have to find. Where is Oswaldo? How about Oswald my gum? And it's people, how much chewing gum can you swallow and digest uh, and while naming movies and TV shows that I've been in. Again, that's just off the top of my head. Do you believe that it takes seven years for your body to process gum? Because then is this like a long play where we white, like see it go yeah. all the way through you? It's like the, it's like the Up documentaries. We got to visit them every seven years and see how the yeah. gum is being digested. Huh. Billy, do you I have thought it? Up was about like an old man and balloons and such. Well, yes, but there's also these cool documentaries where they visit yeah. these people every seven years. Really awesome. Do you have? How about it? General Patton? <laughs> so in this situation, there's a sports tie-in. Wow. For General Patton. Here so obviously, the NBA and the NHL playoffs are happening right now. Seasons oh, yeah. are on the line. Things are going down to the wire. But you know. As go sports, there's a team on the brink of elimination. Seasons will be ended. Careers will end. So you need someone to come in and give a speech. Yeah. And that's where you come in. General An inspiring speech from General Patton. Mm. And you're named, you're named General Patton in this. You would play am the I, role of General Patton. Am I on an actual show right now or my PR guys playing a prank? Are we at a bus stop or, yeah. Is this, yeah, is this an actual show or did you guys build this today just to mess with me? This, uh, this was a terrible uh, idea, uh, <laughs> poorly executed, but he's got a good idea that's well executed as the new game show host for the 1% Club. Wow, good save, Dan. Uh, Way to get us out of that cul-de-sac, buddy. Thank <laughs> <laughs> this quicksand we've fallen into. It premieres next Thursday for Prime Video subscribers, then Mondays, 9 p.m. on Fox, starting June 3rd, plus the next day on Prime.
time as well. Do you mind if we play a little 1% Club with you? Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. He All minds. right. He minds. All right. This is uh, question number one. 80% of Americans got this question. Patton, do you mind reading this if it's on the screen, if you can see it on the screen? Yes. And if your PR people are not playing a prank on you. 80% okay. of Americans got this. Uh, let's put this on the screen for Patton Oswald, General Patton. All right. I'm looking for it. Is it in the it's, chat? It's or coming. It no, it's screen? coming. It's a slow burn. Okay. It's a oh. slow burn. <clears throat> are you ready? Yep. Mr. and Mrs. Kim have five sons. Each son has one sister. How many children do the Kims have? Your 30 seconds starts now. Go ahead, Stugatz. Mr. and Mrs. Kim have five sons. Each son has one sister. All tactic. Hmm. How many, How children? many children do the Kims have? I can read. I see it. Uh, where are they from? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> where are they from? <laughs> what, 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 oh, you, what, what do you mean? I don't know where they're from. Des Moines. Uh, well, that changes everything. <laughs> um, I'm going to say five. <laughs> All right. Um, do you want the answer? Dan? I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't have the answer. <laughs> oh, I think it's six. Yeah, it's six, right? Six. It's six. Oh, go! Thank God. Yeah. yeah, but Des Moines. So people got that one wrong. <laughs> I well, no, eighty percent of Americans got this right. This right. one, this one, only forty-five percent of Americans got this. Let's put this up on All the right. screen. Here we go. Uh, yeah, question. They, they, get, they get hard really quick. Question Ready? number two. What are the only three letters oh. that appear in the names of every day of the week? <laughs> Uh, Wait a minute. That one's I not think I, know. <laughs> I think Stugatz can get this one right. You have 30 seconds, Stugatz. Only 45. This one's hard to believe that only 45% yeah. of Americans it's weird. got, got mm. this right. Go ahead, Stugatz. Where are they from? Oh, God. The Americans who got this right? Yes. Yeah. From America, America. America. Uh, That changes They're everything. From okay. North America. Hmm. D A Y. There it is. Look at Stu Gantz. Way to go. Smart guy. Uh, Pat, why do you love doing this show? A game show host seem, uh, seems perfect for you. You get to ad-lib all the time and uh, have an interplay with, uh, with people that have to be funny. That's exactly why I love it. We, we have these contestants. The, the contestants are the audience. It's 100 people, and they, some of them have the wildest backstories. And I just talk with them and... We all play off each other, and, and you kind of follow these little mini dramas as they march toward the 1%, and it's that in itself is fascinating to me. I love it. Do you have, if I can do some biographical stuff with you because I've got sure. a million curiosities, uh, do you have a project that you've done that represents the most fun for you that you uh, – and, and it's different from the, having the most pride in a project right, that you've right. produced. Right, Oh, boy. I mean, the one that I had the most fun doing, there was a documentary that I produced called The Comedians of Comedy. And it's just my friends and I, it's me, Brian Posehn, Zach Galifianakis, Maria Bamford. We're just on the road, traveling in a van, doing little music clubs. And that whole process of making it, first the documentary, then we did a six-episode TV show. It was all it was was pure fun. It was just hanging out with my friends and filming each other. And I loved it. Have you been able to recreate that anywhere? Just screw it? Because I can't imagine creatively there would be anything more fun than being able to yeah. just uh, create content all the time, riffing uh, among equals on stuff that allows you to say yes right. and. Right. It was, I mean, it was really fun. I, I've never been able to recreate it. I'm kind of happy that I haven't been able to only because it was lightning in a bottle. It was a very specific time in all of our lives where we were young and just kind of stupid and really loose and now we're all you know older and varying degrees of success it, it would be hard for us to all get back together and get back in the van at this point in our lives so it's just good that that record exists of oh look at us just hanging out and being weirdos i love it is there a role above all others that people want to talk to you about if it's goldberg's uh, parks and rec uh, Ooh, uh king of queens uh, Rat people really like king of queens they really like ratatouille i also get a lot of sports people really really love big fan um because you know especially if you listen to sports radio there are people like that that call in and there are fans like that that you will encounter if you're a fan of a sports team and so they that seems to have really 
That's a little film that resonated with a lot of people. How the hell, what do you say to fans who come up to you and uh, it's a parking attendant, right? He's addicted to the New York Giants? He's just, he is a completely obsessed fan, obsessed with one player, one team, and that's his life. He doesn't want anything else out of life <laughs> but just to watch his football team. And he, um, yeah, they're just, I just get a lot of people going, I know someone like that, or like, I, my cousin is like that, or my brother was like that, or like, that's someone that a lot of people have encountered, weirdly enough, and that's kind of cool. Acting isn't as cool as comedy, right? It's not. It's a stand up is your favorite thing. Well, stand up is the one thing where there's no notes. It's just me. That's all it is. Acting is a collaborative thing. Writing is collaborative. Eventually, making movies. Stand up is the one thing where it's you. It's whatever's in your head. You walk out one microphone. That's it. It was fantastic. What's more difficult? It, uh, sometimes comedy can be difficult if you're more difficult if you're trying out something new and you haven't found a way into it. But but for the most part, acting tends to be more difficult because it, it just there's so much more energy involved and being aware and listening to all these different things and being aware of the camera and the light. And like there's a million things going on in your head while you're trying to seem very, very natural and nonchalant. That's super interesting because I've yeah. always thought that stand-up comedy is the hardest thing. And it's not hard for you because you've been doing it for 35 I've years. I've been doing it for so long. And, I mean, I'm sure if you talk to me 20 years ago, I'm like, stand-up's really hard. But when you've been doing it as long as I have, it's it's actually, there's no difference between me off stage and on stage. I can just walk up there and I just talk to people. And it's fantastic. It just feels really, really real to me. How do you deal with hecklers? Um, I'm really good with hecklers. Not that I'm <clears throat> so quick witted. It's that I have dealt with hecklers again for 35 years. I've lost a lot of times. Hecklers have beat me in the past. And then the next day you wake up and go, oh, that didn't even matter. So now I'm fearless because I know in the end I still win. They came to see the show. I have their money. Um, there's a light on me and I have a microphone. I'm going to win. Oh, but that's a good attitude to have, right? I, I, I heard Seinfeld talking the other day about a heckler that got him in 93 that still it stays with him. Really? Yeah. Wow. You would think with his level of success, he would go, maybe that guy was wrong. <laughs> yeah, but I seem to have evidence that he wasn't right. Oh, but you know how much insecurity your business is filled with, oh, right? Don't even get me started. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right? Like you, it's why I asked you about confidence. Even how yeah. in in the same interview I was talking about with Marin, I it, because he says he's happier. One of the things he was saying is, well, once you eliminate all of the other anxieties in my life, all I'm on stage with is my fear. All that's left is my fear. But fear and anxiety are very much the same thing. You know, anxiety comes from this undercurrent of fear, of loss of control. So in, in, if anything, it seems like he just transferred his comedic creativity from his anxiety to his fear. He compensated in a, in a very messed up way. What's your relationship with fear as it relates to this? Uh, I mean, my relationship with fear is I try to look as, at fear and jealousy and anxiety as maps uh, rather than enemies. You know, fear is was a tool that kept us alive. It You know, it was the being afraid of the saber tooth tiger and anyone else with a big rock or a spear is what helped us pass our genes along. So as long as you don't let fear freeze you and you go, oh, no, this is actually a tool and a map. Uh, to who I actually am and who I maybe really, really want, you can make fear work for you. And you can make fear really funny if you just embrace it and admit to it. How the hell did you learn that? That There seems to be some a real... Trial and, uh, trial and error, my friend. For, and also I learned that from all the years of denying fear. There, there's a great novelist named George Saunders, and he goes, if you have a problem and you don't acknowledge it, if you deny your problem, now you have two problems. So I've, I, once I read that, I was like, oh, that's okay. That's true. What about a show where you have people conquer their fears and sometimes it's eat nasty cockroaches and other times you're for whatever reason hanging on top of like 
a taxi cab that's suspended over water, and you have to jump from one side to another and grab a flag and then put it in, and then whoever performs the worst each round gets eliminated, and at the end, you see who has the best fear factor. Mm. Yeah, you're saying that, like, so you're saying fear would be a factor in this show? Yes. Wow. I'd even I mean, call it that, probably, fear factor, maybe. Yeah. That sounds like a really, that sounds like a kind of show you could then, years later, like, launch, uh, like, a podcast empire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, $100 million. In, in of all the comedians. I don't know, that, that actually sounds pretty good. That sounds very tempting. <laughs> the effervescent tour is what he is doing right now. Uh, you still love touring? You still love the grind? I lo I lo it's, to me, it's not, a, the only grind is the airport. And and I've made, I've I've traveled long enough that I know how to make airport travel kind of easy and chill. I, I know little shortcuts around things. Um, but being in a new city, walking around during the day, looking at life, going up on stage, I'll never get enough of it. it it's it's really fun. It's fun. It's really fun. Tickets for the tour, you can get them at PattonOswald.com. And what he says is true. It seems like his personality. He just walks out there and is himself. That's certainly an easier way to do it. What are the oh, secrets yeah. of the airport? Though? Yeah, we got to like get, we, uh, we'll let you go uh, on. Is it a private jet? It's or? patented. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, trust me, I'm not a private jet. What are you, I'm not, you're not talking to Kevin Hart. I don't have a private jet. <laughs> I like Patton's patented secrets for airport travel as, what are they? as a travel show. Or as a, yeah, do you have a couple of little shortcuts well, for the uh, audience? One of the secrets, and again, this is a very, one of the secrets comes from traveling so much and getting so many miles. If, if you travel anywhere, I don't care what airline it is, log your frigate, join every mileage program you can. Do not own a credit card unless it earns miles. Because that will earn you, you know, even if you're flying coach, you can get early boarding, you can get, you know, t and, and whatever it costs, get either clear or TSA pre-check. It, it makes things 10 times easier. Well, that's not and, a And also, never, never check a bag. If yep. you can avoid it, That's never check a yes. bag. Mm -hmm. Ever. Yep. All right, a makeup competition. Patton Rouge. Based in Louisiana. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's rude. You can get tickets to the tour, PattonOswald.com. He's and, so confused and, and the, frustrated. And the One Percent Club premieres next Thursday. For, Billy will do this to you. I mean, for look prime at how subscribers, up Patton's hair is Patton, just from talking Patton, to Billy. You got it for twenty minutes. I've had it for twenty years. That has does, stood does in the Billy. <laughs> does Billy know that? Does he? Feel like he's still talking to me, or is he just kind of talking into the ether? It only right? takes one to hit, Pat. <laughs> oh, okay, that's okay. All right. <laughs> the One Percent Club premieres next Thursday for Prime subscribers. Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern on Fox, and the next day on Prime. Pat, and, uh, lovely talking to you. I hope we didn't run you off forever. I'm headed to Los Angeles, and I want to do a South Beach session with you. I hope we. I didn't would love to. This, I, dude, this was a friggin' blast. I love podcast like this where it's just controlled chaos bring billy with you but i here's what i want i want billy to sit on pitches for two weeks and then when he sees me just blurt every insane notion out of his skull i can't wait there is no shot dan's bringing billy on vacation with us. i might bring billy out there the first victim of pat and harvey oswald see you later Patton. thank you sir all right see you soon man thanks